when I finally, finally, finally recovered from the chronic fatigue fatigue journey that I was on, I had a kinesiologist actually that I was working with and, and he said to me, what has happened is your fight or flight uh, switch never turned off from that age, that very early age when it's supposed to turn off yours just stayed on. And so you've had cortisol running through your body yep. your entire life. And he said, it's no wonder that you are where you are. And so what was normal for me yes. was to be in this heightened state. I didn't yes. know yes. what it was to be still. I would get a sense of it when I, you know, in yoga, obviously in Shavasana and so forth. And I think and it was, thank God that I found yoga because, mm. you know, it was years of just getting it in Shavasana that started to kick me off realizing there is a different state of being mm. and I'm not living it. Mm. Mm. And especially when you work for yourself, that sense of stillness is vital because it affects the decisions that you make, the boundaries that you have with yourself with other people, with the things you choose to say yes to versus the things you choose to say no to. And absolutely. Yeah, that was that's that's really huge for me. I I remember one of my clients, one of my celebrant clients actually, uh, had referred a friend of his to me and uh, I remember bumping into him at another wedding that I was officiating. It's always a small circle. You tend to marry the same group of friends when you're a celebrant. You get to you get to know <laughs> a group of family or a group of friends really well. And I remember being really apologetic about saying no to his friend and saying, oh, I'm just, and, and, and my voice and, 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 and the way my, 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 the, the language that I use at the time. And I'd say, I'm really sorry because I'm really busy and I just can't go to Wollongong and I can't travel to the mountains anymore because, you know, I'm really sorry, but, you know, I've got, and he just said, Patty, just, you know, sometimes you're more defined by what you say no to than what you say yes to. It's okay. You don't need, you, you've earned your stripes. You don't have to officiate every <laughs> wedding anymore. And that just changed my life. It just, it's almost like I needed to be given permission to say no. Yeah. It's so, I mean, so many of us, right? I think I, I definitely found when I started running my own business and because there was this great desire to share the work, because I'd done a lot of, I'd trained in a lot of sort of therapeutic models through my, my healing journey myself and, and before I started my business. And, and I was so passionate again about sharing the work and wanting to really change people's lives, women particularly, that I would then for a while there put myself second. Yeah. So if they needed to meet me at 8.30 at night, I would meet them at 8.30 at night. If someone else needed to meet me at 7 o'clock in the morning, I'd meet them at 7 o'clock in the morning. I mean, mm. I was just doing crazy things, yeah. saying yes, 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 yes to everything to obviously bring in the ink. But because I wasn't very good at setting boundaries around yeah. that stuff and I was wanting to please everybody else. And so... Yeah. Running a business has been really so useful in showing me where my lack of boundary setting mm. has been. Yeah. And then inviting me to really be comfortable and, and confident in that now. And so now I have very clear hours. I have two mm. kind of parts of my week where I see clients and that's it. Mm -hmm. And if they can't meet me in those times, they can't meet me and there's somebody else out there who they'll be able to meet with. But right that took a that took quite a journey for me to get to that point that i I, I wasn't going over you know bending over backwards for everybody else it's one of the things that i found through asana i was very flexible and the strength was the thing that was more my challenge than the flexibility interesting if you've got these two aspects and so it wasn't a problem for me to bend over backwards and twist myself in and out for everybody else but when it came to just being grounded and strong in myself uh, that was the greater challenge to yeah. to find. Yeah. I find that a lot. I found it with myself with the version 2.0 of my adrenal fatigue. I was very much, for lack of a better expression, I was a real victim of my own success because mm -hmm. I had decided that I wanted to earn this amount of money per week. And unfortunately, I don't want to say mindful and I don't want to say conscious. I want to say soulful. I wasn't very soulfully conscientious about what I would need to do in order to make that money. Mm. So sure, mm. I, I made that money, but at what cost? Working seven days, working 
for God knows how many hours per day. It just wasn't sustainable. I think also we have these stories running about we have to work hard to make the money. And so yes. we manifest this kind of environment where we're working seven days a week yes. to do something that if we didn't have that story running, we'd find a much easier way to attract the same level of income into our lives. Yes, yes. And that story is is something that's really interesting. It's very... Um, it sets the foundation for the rest of our life, that story, whether it's something that we inherited from our mum and dad. We've got to work really hard. And and you mentioned it earlier when you said you kind of liked it. it it's almost like um, we wear our suffering like this badge of honour, like I've done so well, therefore I deserve this. But it, it doesn't, energy doesn't actually work like that. Energy has a, a greater intelligence. <laughs> 